All right, wall fans, common sensors, social media world. It's Thursday. You probably saw the teaser. We're running into some technical issues with the internet connection here. Uh, so I'm going to see how long this actually participates. This wants to cooperate with what I'm trying to do. Uh, so apologies. We are starting a little late. Hi, Bree. Uh, but it's be I'm dealing with all these technical issues. We actually got like 15 minutes into episode 93 and I scrapped it because I know a lot of people like to have the actual live feed and the video. So I'm trying to make this actually work. So before the internet gives out on us and let me start this here. We got to have everything functioning. Uh, let's just get right into it. All right, wall fans, common sensors, podcast consumers, welcome to episode 93 of Go Tell to the Wall podcast. I am, of course, your absolute favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke, and we've got an awesome show for you tonight. Uh, this is not working properly for me. Sorry, we're running. I'm, it's ridiculous. I'm running into uh, issues with every little thing tonight, and just nothing wants to cooperate, but that's okay. We will get through it. Uh, for those of you only listening, you're not gonna, you don't realize this, but we started a little late tonight because we're running into some issues with the live feed, uh, which hopefully has been worked out. We'll see how that goes. So, so apologies uh, if you hear me kind of cursing at the <laughs> the camera over here. Uh, so, let's get into it with some social plugs. You can follow us before episodes, during episodes, after episodes, whenever you so please. And there are multiple ways to do that. One of those would be Twitter. Head on over to Twitter. Uh, follow us at Tell the Wall Pod. That's right at Tell the Wall Pod, that's our official Go Tell to the Wall Twitter account. And of course, you can follow my own personal Twitter account, which is at Magic Muppet. Follow both of those, you're going to get all kinds of great nuggets of common sense throughout your weekly uh, social platform perusing. And of course, we are currently live on Facebook as long as the internet wants to cooperate with us. Head on over to Facebook.com slash Go Tell to the Wall, like our page, check back often for updates. I've mentioned it before, we actually have admins on there that keep things in line, as opposed to Twitter, which is basically me just mashing on a keyboard and not understanding what the heck's going on. But definitely still follow our Twitter accounts. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm making that sound worse than it actually is, but Facebook is kind of an all-encompassing social platform for a lot of information that comes out regarding Go Tell to the Wall, whether it be the podcast the YouTube channel, the website, uh, all those good things. And speaking of YouTube channel, make sure you head on over to YouTube, search Go Tell to the Wall, subscribe to our page, you're going to find our beer reviews, as well as clips from all of our episodes and full episodes, the live feeds from Facebook actually get posted on to YouTube. So if you're someone that only lives good things that you can do on YouTube. Uh, all right, one more most importantly, and all-encompassing of those things I just mentioned would be SeanO'RourkeLive.com. That's right, SeanO'RourkeLive.com. Bookmark it, check back off, and there's actually links to take you to all those things that I just mentioned. So if you remember none of the social plugs that I just gave you, just remember SeanO'RourkeLive.com, and you'll be able to link straight to YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. You will also find a link to our Patreon page on SeanO'RourkeLive.com. If you have the means and you see fit to do so, please support us financially. You can support us with a dollar, you can support us with $5, you can support us with $50, whatever it, you, you have the means to do, please do so, uh, and so you can keep this studio running, you can keep us bringing guests in, you can keep Bridget happy, who just joined the live feed, uh, because she wants to make sure we get as many patrons as possible on our Patreon campaign. Bridget, we're running into like serious issues with the live feed here, uh, so I, just keep an eye, let me know if it starts getting wonky and I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I'm keeping an eye on that as well. Uh, we actually That's why we're so late tonight. Br I didn't even tell Bridget we were running late because I was like running around trying to get through all this stuff. Uh, oh my gosh, where was I? Uh, but the Patreon, please help us out if you have the means and you see fit to do so. And of course, beer this week. Beer this week. Super excited about this one. I feel like I do say that a lot, but this one I'm real excited about. It is a super, super local brew uh, from Angel City Brewery. It is their IPA. That's right, their IPA and Angel City Brewery, if you couldn't figure it out from the name, they are a local Los Angeles craft brewery. Super big fan of theirs. They have a lot of tasty brews. And I will tell you, if you're in the Los Angeles area, make sure you check them out. Uh, they have a brewery, which uh, includes a tasting room and all that good stuff, uh, right there in the Arts District in Los Angeles. So check them out. 
I've joked with people that the Arts District is soon going to have to be called the Arts and Brewery District. There's quite a few breweries that are popping up down there. One of them being, uh, one of them being an actual, uh, oh my gosh, one of them being Angel City Brewery, uh, as well as uh, some others down there. There's uh, that Boom Boomtown Brewery or whatever, and there's another one that I'm blanking on the name of, and I just can't remember it. I believe it starts with a T, uh, and now I'm getting Facebook messages. I'm going to tell everyone right now, I just saw a Facebook message come across. I have not started another, uh, <laughs> I haven't started another Facebook account. But also keep in mind that as much as I say the one and only Sean work, there's a lot of other Sean works out there. <laughs> there are quite a few. In fact, there are many that are much more famous than, than I am. Uh, yeah, see, I'm wondering, Bridget, I, I'm hoping it's going to keep up. It, it's internet issues. I don't know what's going on. Hopefully the live feed is going to, uh, to, to cooperate with us here for the rest of the evening. Uh, anyway... So check out Angel City Brewery if you're in the L.A. area. Check them out. They probably have a pretty wide uh, distribution, I would think, because they are getting pretty big, and it's a super tasty, super smooth uh, IPA. In fact, I would even hand one of these to our, our honor producer, Chris, who is not a fan of IPAs, uh, but I think he would enjoy this one but uh, because it is so uh, so smooth. So, so check them out. Check out Angel City Brewery. That's right. All right, now that we're still, I'm still, like, all flustered from our ridiculous uh, technical difficulties here. And, it, like, the GoPro's not, and nothing wants to function right today. I feel like the machines are against me today, but it's fine. It's fine. We will persist, and we will get through. Uh, all right, moving on to some social trends happening right now. Hashtag National Pet Day. That's right, today is Hashtag National Pet Day. I'm not even going to share any particular ones with you. I'm just going to tell you, if you're interested in it, uh, head on over to Twitter or any social platform, really. Uh, search hashtag National Pet Day, and you're basically just going to find a bunch of cute pictures of pets. So if you're into that kind of thing, not that it's hard to find cute pictures of pets on any social platform, but if you want to see some cute pets, that would be the hashtag to search, especially right now, with it being actual National Pet Day. Unfortunately, I don't have any pet photos to share. Not Well, I, I probably do. I've had pets, but uh, unfortunately... Uh, my wife and I and my daughter don't have any, don't currently have any pets. I'm, I'm pushing it off as much as possible because my daughter's two. And I'm like, no, I, I got enough to deal with as it is. I don't need to, uh, to, to add another, add a pet to that at this point. Especially not a dog. I, I love dogs, nothing against them. It's just, like, I'm like, you want to get a pet? Let's get a fish. Let's get a fish for now. They're easy maintenance and stuff. Uh, but one day there will be another pet running around the Orwark household. I, I am confident of that. Hi, Josh. How's it going? We're, run, we're having some technical difficulties on the live feed, so, so hopefully, like I said, it cooperates um, for anyone that's, gonna, that's joining the, the live feed after I have, uh, have pointed that out. All right, another hashtag that's going, around, that's going around social platforms right now, trending right now, uh, is one that I would encourage you to, to check out, and that's hashtag how I want GOT to end. That's right, hashtag how I want GOT to end. That GOT, of course, stands for Game of Thrones. That's right, Game of Thrones. These are people sharing not necessarily their theories, uh, but how they actually want it to end. How they actually want it to end. In fact, uh, this guy, at Mind of Jeffrey. Oh, that's kind of a clever. Sometimes there is a clever Twitter name on there. Uh, again, at Mind of Jeffrey says, Arya starts sitting on top of the Iron Throne. How I want GOT to end. I think a lot of people can get behind that one. I will tell you something right now. Hey, Chris. Uh, I don't have a clever thing to say, but all I will tell you regarding Game of Thrones is if Bronn doesn't get his castle, I am going to be extremely upset. I don't care how anything else plays out. The, the Night King can win. I, even if he wins, Bronn better get his freaking castle, otherwise I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to be upset. I, that's all I want is just Bronn getting his castle. Uh, and I'm going to take this moment, even though we're not in TV, film, and books, I want everyone to listen closely right now. Okay? Game of Thrones Season 8 is premiering on Sunday on HBO. And I get it. Everyone's going to watch it as soon as possible. In fact, I would have given the opportunity. I would watch it as soon as possible. But keep in mind, wall fans, common sensors, use common sense. And know that not everyone is able to watch Game of Thrones right when it comes out. Right when it premieres. In fact, I'm one of those people. Some of us might have tickets to go and see a great band called The Interrupters down in Santa Ana, and won't be able to watch the premiere. And I'm going to be so dead by the time I get home, I'm not going to be able to watch it even after I get home. So I'm going to have to wait till Monday to watch it. So keep that in mind. Don't jump on social media and be like, Oh my God, can you believe what happened? No, calm down. Let other people catch up watching it. I know, like, we've hit a point with things where it's like, what is the, 
the period where you can't post spoilers, we give it a day or two. <laughs> you know, there there shouldn't be any argument over like a day or two. Don't post spoilers Sunday night. Don't post spoilers Monday morning. Let people catch up. I know. Chris, trust me, when, when we bought the tickets to see The Interrupters, because this is one of my absolute favorite bands right now, uh, I said, oh my gosh, it's April 14th. Still went through and bought the tickets because I'm not missing an opportunity to see The Interrupters. If you're going to Coachella this weekend, you also have an opportunity to see The Interrupters on Saturday. I believe they play at 4.30 on one of the stages there at Coachella. And I believe they're in San Francisco tomorrow night, on, on Friday night. Uh, you, unfortunately, even if you want to, you can't come join me in Santa Ana, unless you've already got your tickets, because that, that show sold out like a week after they went on sale. So, uh, again, no spoilers on Game of Thrones. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Don't be that person. Don't do it. It's just common sense. All right, hashtag, that's right, a gift of Sesame Street. I think we are back on live feed now. What's happening? Thank you. Thank you the heads up, Bridget. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but again, hashtag I was raised on the street being Sesame Street. It's funny, I actually, I use this term with my wife, not as a joke. I've used it as a joke, not on the street, but I'll be like, the street. Uh, and now I use it as, as kind of a code word around my two-year-old, because I'll be like, oh, the street. And my, my wife's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Because if I say the full words Sesame Street, uh, then my two-year-old's like, Sesame Street, Sesame Street, Elmo, Elmo, Elmo. I'm like, no, no, we're not watching Sesame Street right now. So, uh, again, hashtag I was raised on, and I'll tell you, I, I went a different way with this. Hashtag I was raised on uh, meat and potatoes. I grew up in an Irish-Polish household, and, and I grew up on very, very much meat and potatoes uh, diet. At dinner when I was growing up, it was there was a, a meat and a potato and a vegetable every night. Meat, potato, vegetable. Sometimes the potatoes would get replaced by a little bit of rice, but it was always meat, protein, uh, potatoes, and a vegetable. So that's what I was raised on. All right, next one, moving along here. Uh, since the live feed is actually cooperating with us. Oh my gosh, I don't understand this, this freaking live feed. Uh, hashtag my nerdiest thing. Hashtag my nerdiest thing. Bridget, I want to know your nerdiest thing. I should have got this one from you beforehand. Uh, I know Chris has quite a few being a uh, the typical nerdiest thing, like comic book Star Wars fan. Uh, and, and a lot of people are sharing really kind of their nerdy addictions and stuff. I see a lot of collections on here. Uh, and I felt the need to share my nerdiest thing with you, and I didn't come up with a clever way of saying it. But for those of you that have seen the live feeds and you see actual photos of the studio, and in fact, here's here's one of my new guys right here. For those of you on the live feed, I have a little bit of an obsession with the Muppets. Mm, I do. I have I've had an obsession with the Muppets ever since I was a kid. Uh, it's funny. My my playa name has has nothing to do with my obsession with the Muppets. It just happened to work out well that that it went hand in hand with my obsession. Uh, for those of you that don't remember that story, go back and listen. It's on one of the episodes. Uh, so I would say my nerdiest thing is definitely my obsession with the Muppets, really anything Henson related. Uh, and, and kind of on the border of that would be my Kevin Smith obsession. There's definitely a, a giant uh, J over here, Jason Muse, but J from J and Silent Bob. Yeah, those are probably my nerdiest things. I do geek out a little bit on baseball. People don't, like, I guess if you're if you were considering a sport... <laughs> If you were considering a sport that was nerdy, baseball would probably be the one. Uh, Bridget, I'll give you that. Uh, everything Bridget likes is cool. That doesn't include Go Tell It to the Wall podcast. So, uh, oh my gosh, Chris, how did I not know about this? Our on-air producer, Chris, I, I knew your nerdy thing, like the star, he's a big Star Wars fan and also a, a bit of a comic book fan. Uh, he also won the Star Wars trivia contest at Comic-Con. I really feel like you need a golden like robe for that. Like I don't think I don't think <laughs> I don't think uh, I don't think I could win like a regular trivia contest, a Star Wars trivia contest at just like a bar. But if you're at Comic Con, that's like being at an All Star game and, and winning. Like you're 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 an All Star baseball game and you hit like three home runs. <laughs> that's I I'll give you credit on that. Uh, I, I still think that your husband is cool, Bridget. Chris is definitely cool in my eyes. Uh, but we all have our nerdy things. We all do. For me, it's Muppets. I love me some Muppets. All right, one more hashtag I want to share with you. I'm, that's right. Hashtag Yacht Cocaine Prostitutes. I know, this is going to be a wonky live feed, guys. Uh, yacht Cocaine Prostitutes. Uh, this has something to do with... Uh, what's his face? Uh, Devin Nunez? 
or whatever, the guy that's like suing, uh, has the whole big lawsuits thing. I don't even want to get into the real reasoning behind it. I just wanted to share this one with you uh, from at the Sassinator. There's a, there's a clever name. Uh, me, when I see yacht cocaine prostitutes trending, and it's a gif of a dude who's just walking along, and suddenly he's like, whoa. Uh, and that's literally what I did as I was looking through some trends this week, and I was like, yacht cocaine prostitutes. <laughs> and of course, a lot of people, including God, the good God above, who you've all seen on Twitter and social platforms, uh, of course had to interject on that as well. So I wouldn't even encourage you to share that one. Just know that if you're looking through hashtags and that pops up, I had the same reaction that you probably are having or did have. So don't even don't even feel bad about it. It's just one of those things where you're like, what? Wait. Uh. And it's funny because at first I was like, clearly this isn't a hip hop song that's out right now. No, people are just okay. That's that's a trending hashtag. All right, let's get into some TV, film, and books here. Oh boy, TV, film, and books. Speaking of comic books, that's right. We, we're getting more and more news coming out of Disney because of the Fox merger, basically. I, I want to keep saying Disney Fox, but it's, it's just Disney now. They, they've merged. Disney owns Fox, and uh, so it's all Disney branded now. Uh, but especially regarding their the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we've talked about this previously. We know Deadpool's going to move along. They're not messing with Deadpool. They're not rebooting Deadpool like they are a lot of other uh, f Marvel characters and properties that Fox had rights to. Uh, they're re they came out and said they're going to reboot most of them. Like, we already knew that. However, we did find out recently that they, Disney has confirmed that the Dark Phoenix movie that's going to be coming out, the X-Men Dark Phoenix movie that's going to be coming out at some point here, is going to be the last installment in the X-Men series. They are going to completely abandon the X-Men movie series as part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, that doesn't mean all of the characters are gone. In fact, we've had it teased a little bit that some of the characters are going to be brought into other aspects of the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So it doesn't mean they're totally gone. And who knows, two years from now, and we're talking about the same studio that put out John Carter and thought it was a good thing. So two years from now, they might go, okay, no, no, we need to do some more X-Men. So, so who knows? This, this isn't like all-time thing. We just know right now there's not going to be any more uh, X-Men movies movies coming along anytime soon. Not standalone movies. We'll probably see them, see them popping up. A lot of people, this is where I do get a little nerdy. Uh, Deadpool is, is technically lumped in with the X-Men a lot of time. <laughs> Absolutely lumped in with the X-Men. My, my first experience with Deadpool uh, when I was younger was, was through the, the X-Men universe. And I was a little bit of an X-Men fan uh, back in the 90s when they were really taking off. Uh, so clearly they're not going to abandon all these characters. We'll see. It's going to be interesting to see where it goes. Uh, and, and and a lot, there's going to be a lot of Dark Phoenix because that is going to be the last one. And for now, and there's a lot of star power behind that that whole franchise. Although I got to be honest, I wasn't super intrigued by the last couple of X Men movies. There's been a couple of them I really enjoyed. Uh, the last one or two that came out, I was like, eh, you know, they're okay, they're fine. Uh, some more television news. We're looking at a live action Jetsons series. That's right, those Jetsons. You know, George Jetson, Jane Jetson, uh, Astro Jetson, Leroy Jetson. Can't remember the daughter's name, Jetson. There's going to be a live-action series coming to television. Warner Brothers is currently working on it with Robert Zemeckis. Robert Zemeckis is going to executive produce it. Uh, and they're currently shopping it around to networks. It's being developed, but they're also shopping it around to networks. We don't have a lot of news right now. Uh, a lot of this is coming out in leaks. So we'll, we'll kind of see wh where this goes. But I'm, I'm sure that's going to be happening. And, of course, with live-action everything just happening all the time, it kind of makes sense. And I've said this before with things that are being remade uh, and, and what's the word? Oh, rebooted. That's the word I'm looking for. When you're, when you're doing that, it, 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 it's better to kind of take it in a different direction. Although the Jetsons was kind of funny, but just really go ridiculously funny with, with the Jetsons live action series. And I think I could totally get behind that. But we'll see. More and more news on that's going to be coming out. Uh, this next one, I can absolutely thank you, Chris. I, Chris had to go through the song, his daughter, Judy. <laughs> Why did I not, like, I should have just gone through the song in my head. Uh, this one I am excited about, though. New series from starring Rob Riggle. Rob Riggle. If you're not familiar with Rob Riggle, I'm not going to sit here and explain it. Go look him up. Uh, chances are you just don't realize that you're familiar with Rob Riggle. Incredibly funny actor and comedian. Just incredibly funny. Uh, does He's... He, Character actor, a lot of times. Uh, he's, he's been in tons of films and everything as a, as a character actor, kind of a, a secondary role in a lot of stuff, uh, but just made a name for himself as being just ridiculously funny, and, and everything he's done has been... I wouldn't say everything he's done has been ridiculously funny, but everything he's done has been at least funny enough where I'm like, hell yeah, that's great. 
So, he's got a new show coming out on Discovery Channel. It's going to be an adventure series. And Rob Riggle is going to travel the world and try and solve some of the craziest unsolved mysteries around the world. Like, just, if you know Rob Riggle, you can get into this. You can absolutely get into this, uh, so check it out. Look for that coming to Discovery Channel uh, very soon. Didn't have an actual date on that one, but it, it is going to be coming out. Uh, and like I said, Rob Riggle is just very, very, very funny. All right, moving along, we do have some more Marvel news. Marvel news. Actually, not really Marvel news, just interesting tidbit. I talked about the uh, Avengers Endgame tickets last week and how they're being sold for hundreds of dollars on eBay. Literally hundreds of dollars. You can, you can go on there and, and get a ticket uh, for anywhere from $100 to $500 for opening night of Avengers Endgame. Well, we're getting some more news, just interesting news, uh, especially from Fandango. So it, it, the Avengers Endgame shattered shattered the ticket to the pre-sale ticket records that were held by anything else and the most recent one and the one that held the record was actually Avengers Infinity War which came out last year uh before that I believe it was Star Wars Force Awakens it was freaking Disney ra raking it in raking it in and it's interesting because Fandango kind of knew this was coming so they had to somewhat revamp their website not completely revamp, but revamp the part of their website where people go through to buy tickets. And what they did was actually built in a waiting room. If you've ever had to wait around for concert tickets, or, oh, my fellow burners out there, I know yesterday was rough. I wasn't participating, but the Burning Man tickets was just crazy. And you sit in a waiting room. Uh, that's what Fandango had to do to keep their entire server from crashing due to uh, the, basically, hysteria <laughs> over trying to get tickets to Avengers Endgame. Uh, so hopefully you got your tickets. If you're trying to go see it the opening night. Personally, I, I avoid movies opening night. I just, I do. I avoid them opening night. I did, oh man, I saw Force Awakens on opening night. But some friends just had extra tickets for, uh, what you call it down there. Not Pentages, but the, the Disney theater down there. I'm not going to try to remember. Chris will, Chris will hit me with it here in a minute. Alright, moving along. Space Jam. Remember Space Jam back in the 90s with Michael Jordan? 1996 that film came out. Well, they're working on Space Jam 2. They've been working on it for a little while. It's going to star LeBron James, who some would say is the current Michael Jordan. I'm not, I'm not here to debate that. Uh, but we just got some news that they are going into a rewrite for Space Jam 2. Ryan Coogler is actually going to rewrite it. He was attached to Black Panther. I believe he directed, wrote, and I believe also directed Black Panther. Uh, and, uh, oh, Creed. I believe he's the one attached to Creed, which was the, the Rocky sequel spinoff that came out with Michael B. Jordan. Uh, they're getting into some, some issues here regarding casting. They're trying to cast other NBA players. If you saw Space Jam, it actually featured other NBA players. Not throughout the film, uh, but interspersed throughout the film. And they're having trouble casting uh, additional NBA players. And the main reason is because Nike is heavily involved. This is why I find this interesting. Nike is heavily involved in Space Jam 2. Uh, LeBron James happens to be a Nike athlete. If you're not familiar with kind of how contracts work and work in endorsements, especially when it comes to sports, uh, you, you tend to sign an exclusive footwear deal, especially in the NBA, um, even in the NFL and, and maybe a little bit in hockey, but you sign these footwear deals and then they make shoes and you're only wearing Nikes. And it's, it, it extends really to players that you wouldn't even think. Like, yeah, LeBron James and, and Steph Curry, these guys that even if you're not a sports fan you've heard about, uh, really, even the, the smaller, like the, the 12th guy on the bench, he's even got some kind of endorsement deal with like a Nike or a New Balance or one of those. I don't think New Balance is in the basketball game. But what's happening is these other athletes, because they endorse other shoes, are having trouble actually signing on to this film. So it's going to be interesting to follow it. I'm not going to say I'm super excited about Space Jam 2, uh, but it's going to be interesting to follow it. Oh, man. Emmy Rossum. Remember Emmy Rossum? We've talked about her. Fiona from Shameless. She just finished her Shameless stint uh, with the end of the, the last season of Shameless. And we got some news as far as what she is up to now. She can think of almost ever, I might say ever, uh, and that would be Mr. Robot. She's married to the guy that created Mr. Robot. I had no idea. That's a cool little interesting tidbit. But we are going to be seeing more stuff from Emmy Rossum. Uh, pro, pro, on the acting front, but definitely on the directing front. She, she was getting her feet wet with directing on Shameless already, so she's, she's got that experience, and I'm sure uh, part of this first look deal also includes directing, not just acting in, in the actual uh, projects that, she, that she's getting first look on. All right, one more thing. This should have gone in music, but I just I didn't, I, didn't have, I didn't have the strength to do an entire music section just for this. Uh, hi, Laura. I see your little picture up there. There she is. 
live feed, still going in and out, but it's okay. Uh, this last thing I want to talk about, American Idiot Gender Swap. That's right, not the album American Idiot. I'm talking about the Broadway musical American Idiot uh, that was brought to you by Green Day, among everyone else that developed that thing and got it on Broadway. Fantastic. Definitely my favorite musical I've ever seen live, by far. I, I just love the rock musicals. However, the reason I bring up Gender Swap is Billy Joe Armstrong took to Twitter and was talking about a college that was, was putting on the performance... Uh, it was actually Chapman University, which is here in Orange County in Southern California. And as he was tweeting out a congratulations and whatnot, he said, wouldn't it be a great idea if we did a gender swap and make Jesus of Suburbia, who is the main character, if you're not familiar with it, uh, make, instead of a, a male, make that a female. And then instead of what's-her-name, have what's-his-face. Those, those are male and female characters in it, the two main characters. Uh, I think this would be fantastic. I, I hope they do it. I want to go see it. I will go see American Idiot any time. I don't care who's performing it. Like, the kids down the street could be performing it. I'd be like, all right, American Idiot, I'm going to go walk down the street and watch this. Fantastic. If you haven't had the chance to see it, uh, definitely go check out. Check it out. And if you're in Southern California, you might be able to catch it still Chapman University. I've actually caught the traveling performance of it here. Never saw it on Broadway. I caught the traveling performance here years ago when it first traveled. Uh, and then my wife and I saw another, a different performance of it at, like, a performing arts center. And it was just, they had put it on. And it was, that, that was also fantastic. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. All right, let's get into some parenting. Oh, boy. I don't have a ton of stuff this week, but I have a couple things that I definitely want to talk about. In fact, let me get a sip of my uh, Angel City Brewery IPA here that I literally almost just spilled all over my keyboard. Hmm. I'm, like, klutzy today. Technology's not working for me today, and on top of that, I'm klutzy. It, it's crazy. And it's also been windy and warm, like, ugh, ugh, freaking L.A., I still love it. It's okay. All right, parenting. So I found this article uh, from BigThink.com. And it's funny because at first I was like, and it's, it's all about the biggest change to manhood is equal parenting. And I was like, okay, well, this is going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. And I don't want to talk about this whole article. What I do want to talk about is a couple things in it. Uh, the, the writer of this article actually talked about uh, how when, and it's got to be an older gentleman, how when his kids were younger, he wasn't as active, and it wasn't so much that he wasn't as active, it just wasn't the norm for fathers to be at home, for fathers to be taking care of kids and whatnot. But then he goes on to say that he knows people, parents in their 20s and 30s, who don't think like that, specifically regarding the term, uh, like, and I'm sure Chris can relate to this, I'm 100% I'm positive this has happened to Chris, uh, is, is when you're out with your kid or your kids, and someone says, oh, is daddy babysitting today? And the author of this article talked about how people don't say that now. And that's when I just, I put my head on the desk and I was like, but they do. But they do. It is still a problem. I get this constantly. I'm 36 years old. 36. I'm in my 30s. I still get this constantly. It's, oh, daddy's babysitting today. Go back and listen to the, the Mother's Day thing from a couple years ago. My, my daughter's first Mother's Day. Oh, God. The other, one I, the other one I love is when, like, I'll be at a checkout, and the, and the, the, the bagger or the checker will look and be like, what did daddy do today? And then they turn to me, good job, daddy. I'm dressed, too. I'm capable of dressing myself and my kid. In fact, it's not that hard to dress a two- I mean, it's hard to get them to get dressed, but it's not that hard to dress a two-year-old, to find clothes for them. So this change hasn't fully occurred. Yes, are people getting more and more understanding of things? Are people... Yes, of course. Uh, but we can't just sit back and say, 